The question that many returning Yu-Gi-Oh players ask themselves, or ex-Yu-Gi-Oh players ask themselves, is what if Yu-Gi-Oh didn't have a ban list? Because what I find, especially when talking to people that played before there was a ban list, around 2003-2004 era, is that people really don't like the ban list, the idea of it. They say, if I buy a card, I should be allowed to play with that card. And while I do sympathize with people that want to play the cards that they purchase, the idea of the ban list, when it's working properly, is to to promote healthy play environments. Now, I'm not gonna pretend like Konami always does that perfectly, but in general, the ban list when it's working well is supposed to get you excited to play Yu-Gi-Oh! And I think overall, if we're looking at all of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s history, I would say that in general, Konami does a pretty okay job at doing that. Sometimes they hit weird cards and sometimes they don't hit cards that probably should be hit, like Firewall Dragon. But in general, over all of Yu-Gi-Oh!, over the 20 years that it's been around, I would say that ban lists have promoted healthy play environments or at the very least have changed the game in an interesting and unique way from the previous format. If you stumbled upon this video and you haven't played Yu-Gi-Oh for a while and you're wondering, or maybe you played back when you were a kid and you're asking yourself, well, why does Yu-Gi-Oh even need a ban list in the first place? Well, I have good news for you. I actually made an entire video covering that exact question. I'm not gonna cover many of the same things that I talked about in that video in this video because I don't want to just retrace my steps. But the basic gist is that because Yu-Gi-Oh, unlike card games like Magic and Pokemon, doesn't have set rotation, which means you can always use all the cards that are available except the ones that are on the forbidden and limited list it means that there has to be a ban list because while other games can sort of contain the modern format within like one or two years worth of sets Yu-Gi-Oh! I mean if you wanted to you could play many of the cards that were available in the very first set now obviously not all those cards are going to be as good as new cards but technically speaking as long as the card isn't on the forbidden and limited list even if it came out 15 years ago you can go to a Yu-Gi-Oh! tournament today and play that card in your deck which makes Yu-Gi-Oh! very different from most modern card games. Now, obviously, the, most of those card games do have legacy formats, but in general, because Yu-Gi-Oh! doesn't really use many other formats, even though they do technically exist, Yu-Gi-Oh! has to have a ban list just to keep things under control. Moving on, though, in today's video, I want to talk about some of the reasons that Yu-Gi-Oh! cards get banned. And I know that it's true that many Yu-Gi-Oh! cards end up getting banned because they are simply too independently strong compared to other cards, and we're going to talk about that in today's video as well but I do want to focus on some of the more strange reasons that cards get banned in Yu-Gi-Oh because strength isn't all that matters when Konami is designing a ban list so anyway let's jump right in so yes there are cards that are independently too strong to actually exist in Yu-Gi-Oh this doesn't happen as often nowadays but especially if you're looking at many of the older cards on the ban list cards like delinquent duo cards like pot of greed cards like graceful charity all of those types of cards those really old cards with not a lot of text that just have like one really simplistic effect and usually they're normal spell cards those ones are too independently strong to actually exist in Yu-Gi-Oh and in all of those cases or at least most of the cases if you look on the cards that are forbidden many of those cards just are strict replacements or strict upgrades for current cards in the game why would you ever play a card like Allure of Darkness if you could play three pot of greed no one in the right mind would unless you were playing Allure of Darkness as your extra copies of pot of greed so Konami really does try to ban these independently powerful cards that there isn't really a replacement for so that not every single person is playing them. I think I quoted the article a couple videos ago now, but Konami sort of goes through in 2003 why they created a ban list in the first place. And one of the reasons was that when the people didn't have any cards that were banned and they just had limited and semi-limited, people's decks of the 40 card decks that they were playing were 23 of the same cards in every single deck, which meant that every Every single person was playing more than 50% of the same cards as every other person which Konami wanted to try to stop. So many of the cards on the balance, especially the older ones, are banned simply because they are too good compared to everything else in the game. In contrast, when you think of more modern Yu-Gi-Oh cards actually getting banned, in many cases, if not all cases, it's not necessarily because the card is independently better than every other card in its class, but oftentimes it's because that card in 
combination with one or more cards creates a degenerate or overpowered combo or deck that Konami doesn't want in the current format. I think of cards like Astrograph Sorcerer, which honestly, if you don't know this, and it might sound crazy in retrospect, but before Heavy Metal Foe's Electromite, Astrograph Sorcerer very rarely was played in the Pendulum Magician strategy because independently the card is not that strong if you take Heavy Metal Foe's Electromite out of the equation. However, when Electromite eventually did come out, obviously there is a really ridiculous interaction between Astrograph Sorcerer and Heavy Metal Foe's Electromite where you could repeatedly spam Astrographs from your hand over and over again while you were searching them with the Electromite itself, which created a pretty degenerate and overpowered combo in the context of that format. So Konami is left with a couple options. They obviously could just hit one of the cards or neither of the cards, but what they chose to do instead of just like slightly hitting both of the cards in the case of like if you limited both of them, instead of doing that, at least at the time, they left Electromite at three copies per deck and then they ban Astrograph Sorcerer outright. Therefore, it wasn't just about the combo being less consistent like it would have been if they just limited both cards, but the combo itself no longer exists. And what's funny is that that ended up not being enough to stop Pendulums because they had to limit Electromite a little bit later on. But initially, the Astrograph Sorcerer ban did hurt Pendulums a lot. Another reason that Konami can ban cards and has banned cards in the past is that they promote negative tournament experiences or they're just too hard to rule. And I know some of you are going to think, well, what card actually really negatively impacts everyone's tournament experience? What card is too hard to make ruling calls on? And the one that I'm thinking of, well, there's two, but first we'll talk about Victory Dragon. Victory Dragon is banned, and a lot of people read this card and say, well, this card doesn't seem that strong. First off, I think many of those people don't understand that Victory Dragon says you win the match not the game because all Yu-Gi-Oh matches are played best two out of three so with Victory Dragon if you meet the condition and win the game you actually just win the entire best two out of three match which is ridiculously powerful however in the case of Victory Dragon one of the reasons it is on the ban list is because the rulings surrounding it are so muddy and I mean when you summon Victory Dragon your opponent because this is just how Yu-Gi-Oh works they can just scoop immediately before you attack at all and then what you can say is, okay, maybe you imply a rule where when Victory Dragon is summoned, your opponent can't scoop, but that goes against everything Yu-Gi-Oh sort of stands for. You're supposed to be able to scoop at any given time, so Victory Dragon doesn't really work that way, and even if it was that way, you could do a situation where when your opponent summons three Dragon Monsters and hasn't used a normal summon, you could just scoop right there. So Victory Dragon causes so many ruling issues from people being frustrated that they managed to summon the card and their opponent just scooped and then they didn't get a chance to attack that they had to ban it. It's not that the card is particularly powerful, but it does promote a negative tournament experience just because it's so frustrating to actually play against and play with, so Konami just took it out of the game. Another example of this is Self-Destruct Button, a card that was commonly played in burn decks when they didn't get their combos going, but Self-Destruct Button is one of the only cards in Yu-Gi-Oh, if not the only card, I can't think of any others off the top of my head, that actually interacts with the match in a draw sense because there are cards that cause you to instantly win and cards that cause you to instantly lose. There aren't a lot of cards that say you draw the game and Self-Destruct Button was just one of those cards that created a whole bunch of issues in tournaments. Let's say you're going into time in a tournament and you just activate Self-Destruct Button. Do you play another game? Do you not play another game? Are both players are going to leave unhappy because now they have a draw. It's just one of those cards that shouldn't exist because it's so frustrating just from a design standpoint and it probably shouldn't have been created in the first place. I know we've just been talking about banned cards so far, however, because this next card is in sort of the same category that I just mentioned, I do want to give a quick shout out to Twin Headed Behemoth. Now, this card looks pretty unassuming, and it isn't like the greatest card in the game. However, did you know at one point this card was limited, not because so many people were using it, but because of the ruling surrounding it. So that was before problem solving card text was introduced, which meant that the way cards were written was kind of funky and uh, changed changed from set to set. It was it was all a mess. If you didn't play before problem solving card text, uh, consider yourself lucky because the game was extremely hard to read in terms of like what was the cost and what's targeting, all that sort of stuff. But in the case of Twin Headed Behemoth, Konami couldn't figure out a way to actually say that it was once per duel for all copies, so they had to limit the card. Yes, that's true. The reason that Twin Headed Behemoth was limited, and I know it wasn't forbidden, but it was limited because Konami couldn't figure out a good way to write on the card that it was once 
cents per duel no matter how many different copies you had and that's a case of once again Konami having to hit a card on the forbidden and limited list just because they couldn't quite figure out how to rule it effectively. Before I say my final point in this video I do want to mention that in general one thing that Konami does not factor in when they're deciding if a card should be on the forbidden and limited list is the monetary value in the secondary market of that card and that's a good thing and I do want to say a couple weeks ago I did a poll asking if Konami should factor that in and the vast majority of you I mean almost 90% of the responses said that they should not factor in the price of the card and that's great I'm glad you guys feel that way because when Konami starts factoring in things like secondary markets it really makes the ban list a little bit trickier in terms of which cards get hit and which cards don't get hit and we can look at dual links to actually know that this doesn't work if they factor in the price because a whole bunch of scenarios in dual links on their ban list cards that weren't actually that powerful ended up getting hit because they were lower rarity than other cards and obviously Duel Links doesn't have a secondary market but in general especially for the harder to get cards Konami knows how much time or how much money or a combination of both that you spent to purchase or get those cards for your deck especially if you have a playset. so cards like Mass Change and Mass Hero Anki which are ultra rares tend to not get hit on the ban list that Konami puts out they're going to hit cards that you didn't have to spend as much money or as much time actually picking up. So I'm really glad as, as a Duel Links player and as a TCG player that Konami does not do that for the TCG because it would really mess up a lot of things. I mean, just imagine a world where every single main set secret rare could not get hit on the ban list no matter how good it was just because some people spent a lot of money on it. Obviously, you want to protect your investment, but I think it goes a little bit too far when you take gameplay out of the equation and focus on price and even as something to be considered I think it's still just better to focus only on gameplay elements. The last reason that I want to mention about in this video why cards get banned is one that I'm sure many people commented on this video before they even watched it and that's that Konami bans some cards just because Konami wants to ban them and I, I know some of you might hear that and you may be saying well that's really obvious I mean Konami can do whatever they want with the game and that's true I, I do want to mention that because Konami owns this game they are allowed to just take any card out of the game if they want to that's what they can do with the ban list however what I'm talking about is the cases where a card isn't that powerful it isn't being played in the metagame and most people wouldn't have guessed it to be on the ban list in a million years and I'm not talking about the older cards that are that got banned and now we look at them and say well those aren't very powerful I'm talking about cards like rank up magic argent chaos force that not really anyone was thinking needed to be hit I mean don't get me wrong it was played in a combo deck that a lot of people weren't really a fan of playing against however that deck was played so so sparingly that it really wasn't worth hitting this card but because Konami just doesn't want that combo to exist they just take it out of the game entirely and like I said Konami has every right to do this this is their game now the consumers can sort of retaliate and maybe stop buying product to sort of say hey I don't appreciate that you took my rank up magic Argent for chaos force out of the game but in general Konami is allowed to do whatever they want and I think overall like 95 to 98 percent of the time when a card gets banned or ends up on the forbidden and limited list we can point to the format and point to the decks that are being played and say okay we know why this card was hit maybe we don't agree with it but at least we can say okay we understand why Konami took this card out of the game but sometimes that like five to two percent of the time Konami just hits a random card for really no apparent reason and everyone just kind of scratches their heads in confusion anyway though hope you guys enjoyed today's video I had a lot of fun making it like I said if you don't or if you haven't watched that video about why Konami needs to implement a ban list into Yu-Gi-Oh I'll put a link at the end of this video that you guys can just click on just so you can kind of learn more about the ban list in general but yeah I think that this was a good overarching history of why certain cards get banned I think if you go to the ban list and look at the forbidden cards almost all the cards fall under those categories but thank you guys so much for watching I will see you later goodbye